Hello and welcome to another part of my combat system tutorial series. In this episode we will set up so our character can attack and we will do some groundwork for the combat system. So before we get into it we need to stop stamina region to clear an invalidate timer and we also need to change the weapon type enum to actually the weapon type so like sword dagger stuff fist set it to whatever you want afterwards uh, don't forget to set it in the weapon data table now we can create another enumeration called equipped hand this will essentially say which hand is currently equipped with weapon so first one left then right two-handed and dual wield now let's go to the combat system and create another structure this will be structure for the animations so set it to any montage and set it to array and now create as many variables as many attacks you want for example left hand light attack left hand strong attack etc etc now when you're done close it and go to miscellaneous to create another data table create it from the structure you created just now now the row name will be the name of the weapon type so based on the weapon type we know which animations uh, we should get from the animation data table now for the animations uh, go grab your attack animations i'm gonna get these three and create an any montage from them then i'm gonna move them to the animations folder and rename them and i also want them to use root motion so i'm gonna enable it And after you've done that, go to the data table and set the animations to the correct array. Now go to the combat system component and create a custom event for uh, both inputs, left hand attack and right hand attacks. Now create a macro, this macro will be called check for weapon and if can attack. It will have input of the type execute. And two outputs called weapon equipped and weapon not equipped. Now we need to create some variables. First one is is attacking and the second one is can't attack. Now get them both and we check if they are not true. Either one of them. Now we need to create another macro called check for strong attack. This macro will have one input of the tab execute and two outputs uh, outputs will be named true or and false now let's get the character and cast the third person character then get the player controller and is input key down the key will be promoted to a variable called a uh, strong attack input and now we check if it's true Now we need another variable called strong attack which will be true uh, 
which we will set to true and false. And if the cast is failed, we want to create a variable called AI strong attack for the AI. If you don't want the AI, you don't need to do this. Now create another function called check for stamina. This one will be pure with the output of the type boolean and input integer called stamina needed. Now we check if the current stamina is equal or more to the stamina needed. And that will be the return value. Now let's go back, check for the strong attack and then we check for the stamina and we'll promote it to variable called stamina for strong attack and another one called stamina for light attack. Now check them if they are both true. And set them to expose on spawn and edit table as well as the strong attack input. Now we need to check if the weapon uh, that we, if we are holding a weapon. So for that we need to create an input that will be called attacking weapon of the type master weapon. And now if it's not valid, we're going to check uh, for another variable called fist attacks, which we will use later. This will be also editable and expose on spawn. Now uh, create another function called set is attacking and it will have one input of the type is attacking and return. Now we will set both of them to true. And the last variable we need here is attacking weapon of the type master weapon. And this will be set to something is if we are holding weapon and if we are not it will be set to nothing now let's grab it here for both of these and set the attacking weapon to left hand and right hand weapon now we create a variable called attacking hand which will be of the type equipped hand enumeration that we created And let's set them right here. Oh, as I forgot, oh, we just need one execute. Um, so let's call it return and delete the other one. And now when you set the attacking hand to left and right based on the input, we can create another custom event called setup attack animations. Custom, and we want to trigger the event in the input. Now we need to create another function called get animations. Uh, let's get the attacking weapon and check if it's valid. Then we need to get weapon data and break the weapon structure. From here we want to get the attacking hand. Now we actually need uh, another function to get the correct animations. So let's create another function. This will be called get correct animations. It will be pure and it will have one input of the type equipped hands. Now I'll switch on equipped hands and get data table row of the animation data table. And then we return with two outputs of the uh, type of the type any montage array. One will be light attacks and another one will be strong attacks. Then the outro will break the structure and set the corresponding animations to the output. Now copy this for each switch and set it up. Now we need another input of the type weapon type 
and it will be called weapon type. It will also be a single variable, not an array. Yeah, now we want enum to string. And now um, we'll create just a little function to help us called remove spaces from text. First, it will have input of the type string called source and one output of the type name called output. From the string, we want to replace and return value will be the output and select the from and just press spacebar. Two will be nothing. It will also be a pure function. This is just because the row name in the weapon type animations cannot have spaces. So if you have something like a thrusting sword or straight sword or anything with space, it will not get the animation. That's why we remove the spaces from text. Now let's set it to the row names and go back to the get animation function, get the correct animation, set the variables. And now we can just return with two outputs. One will be light attacks and another one will be strong attacks. Of course, any montage arrays. And don't forget to set them right there. Now let's get the animations in the event graph and we also need to get character. From that we want to play any montage. And now we actually need to check if we will use strong or light attacks. So, so let's copy any montage right here set the target and now we need to get just one animation not the whole array so for this we need to create another function but we also need to create one variable that will be called attack counter uh, of the type integer and now create the function it will be called select current animation it will have one input of the type any montage array called attacks array then we want to check if the attack counter is bigger or equal to the length of the attack array. Afterwards, we want to return with the one output of the normal any montage called attack animation. And then we want to get from the attack array and last index. And when it's false, we just want to get the attack counter and set it to attack animation. Now it also needs to be a pure function and grab them for both light attacks and strong attack attacks and set it to any montage. Now with this, we need to create another custom event called clear, clear attack counter and another one called reset attack counter. Now we want to get the retrigerable delay and duration promote to a variable called clear attack counter time. Uh, I will set it to two seconds. It will essentially mean uh, when we will clear the attack counter so the combo will not be progressing. Now we need to set uh, attack counter to zero and reset attack counter right after the delay. And also set the was previous strong attack to false. Go to the animations and we need to set two notifies. So right after you want the attack to progress to another attack, you will create a notify called at again. You will do the same thing for all the attacks except the last attack. 
because for that we want to create another notify called combo end and now we need to set them so they will do something so go to the player on mbp and set both of those notifies right here now we need to get player character and cast it to third person character convert it to pure cast and then we can get the combat system component and in the combat system we need to create function called increment attack counter that will just get the attack counter and increment it by one Now back in the NMBP we want to increment the attack counter and then we want to clear attack counter and then we want to set is attacking to false. Afterwards we want to set reset attack counter to the combo end and also set is attacking to false. Now go to the third person character and set the input that you will be using. For me it's left mouse button. Let's get the combat system component and get the input right hand attack. If you have fist attacks to true, set it to false and the can't attack will be by itself. Uh, you don't need the knot. And now when we equip weapon, you can see we can attack. If we wait, the combo will reset and you can see it's working correctly. Now we can set the stamina for strong attack and light attacks right here, but it will do nothing. So let's change it. Go to the combat system component and create a function called decrease stamina. It will have one input of the type integer called amount. Now let's get the current stamina and max stamina and check if it's bigger or equal to the max stamina. If it is, we want to trigger the stamina region. If it's not, we just want to get the current stamina and decrease it by the amount. Afterwards, we want to get owner and cast to third person character. Then we get player character and update, st update stamina bar. Afterwards, we pulse stamina region. And then we can return. I forgot to connect this, so set, stem, set current stamina and set it right before the cast and the decrease stamina is done. Now let's go back to the event graph and set the decrease stamina right here after the player any montage and set the amount to the variables. And now when the variables have some value, you can see that when we attack, the stamina will decrease and also it will pulse for one second and afterwards it will start regenerating the stamina. So thanks for watching, I hope this video helped you somehow and I hope to see you in the next one, bye!